Hello everyone, this is Magnazone 150 Anthony J. Navarro here with yet another product review. On behalf of Magnazone World, here I am talking about the Kobo Mini. Here's a couple of photographs of it. This is the Kobo Mini with the uh, sleep cover gray, as you can see. I'm in the middle of reading my Linux Plus certification guide. And then the rest of the video will show you what it looks like and how to get it running. So first of all, here we are with the Kobo Mini box. I decided to I, I went to work one day and I decided to get one. It was half price at forty nine dollars at the time. Um, it had fallen for Black Friday and then it had fallen again for as we got closer to Christmas and during Boxing Week. Now, what's funny is I bought one that was uh, an open box because funny enough, if you notice there, the name that's on the reseal and verify sticker, the person who did the reseal and verify was myself which is pretty awesome so I thought you know why not I, I mean I can trust myself right <laughs> to uh, obviously when I bought it it wasn't already turned on and say Linux on it but you know what I mean um, so th that would have been actually kind of awkward but anyway um, there's the Kobo Mini right there very very small with a 5 inch screen very very thin um, and weighs almost literally nothing at 134 grams so I can tell you for sure that the battery life on this on this guy is uh, is like a month and when it comes to turning on and off the unit it's just a really simple just there's a little if you've already just seen there there's a little uh, switch you just push over and that turns on the device and you know give it a moment to load if it's been completely turned off and if it's just in sleep mode you can it'll just wake itself up so we'll just give it a moment for it to load in the meantime, I will show you here that it comes with a little bit of an instruction guide. And in the instruction guide also mentions your your one year limited warranty. Of course, I would recommend getting an extended service plan when you're considering um, having it for the next couple of years. It's a smart idea. doesn't cost much. Most places will, co will charge like about $10 anyway. Um, usually in that spot there, we have the USB cable. But since I've already opened the box uh, prior to starting this video, it's not there, but you know I'll show you there. Just a standard USB-B cable, so I mean, even your uh, Samsung uh, charger will work with it, or certain LG phones, and even some Sony ones too, compatible with for charging it. So here we are with the Kobo Mini and my MacBook Pro running Snow Leopard, and there is Ubuntu 12.04 LTS, which is pretty darn sweet. We're also going to be working with Windows 8 for this video as well just so you kinda know how to install particular software that will help you put ebooks onto the device let's get started with Linux first thing you want to do for Linux there is a program called Calibre um, of course you just go to calibre-ebook.com and it'll tell you little stuff about what it is and you can also use it's pretty much kinda like a program a generic program that works for pretty much all operating systems and works with pretty much every ebook on the market at the moment. So as you can see there, there's Windows, Windows 64, you can have it on the USB, you can have it on, Win on Mac OS X, you can even have it on Linux, which is pretty darn sweet. So the first thing you want to do is you want to actually go and get that link that, I just, that you just saw there for a quick moment. You want to actually open up the terminal and you actually want to go ahead and paste it into the terminal. Now, of course, silly me, um, I was having a little trouble there, struggling a little, but <laughs> I accidentally uh, thought I could copy it, but I don't know why. But that doesn't matter. The point is, you paste it, you can just right click on the terminal and paste it, and you just press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and it will actually ask you for your password because it doesn't do things without administrative. So I'll just give myself a moment to enter the password and then there you go and you just press enter and it'll start loading the software it'll load the tarball file which then will compile into proper um, necessary for the for Debian to understand and then it will go ahead and set itself up using bash using its uh, usual and that's about it really So then, of course, if you after you're done, you can actually start it by just typing it into the terminal, 
and it will open up the actual program. So there you go. So all you got to do now is you just have to press next because it doesn't really have anything there that you have to worry about. You just look, go to Kobo Touch because the Kobo Mini is pretty much the exact same type of firmware or similar to the Kobo Glow and the Kobo Touch. So that's what you want to go for. It'll work just fine with that. And there you go. Now that you've loaded it, now you don't have to worry about going into the terminal to open it every time you need it. You can always take a look for it. And that's the program there for you. And here we are on Mac. We're going to go ahead and download it from Calibrea's website, except this time we chose Mac OS X. We give it a moment because it needs to download a DMG file. Pretty much a disk image uh, specifically made for Mac. Once it's finished downloading, you just double click on it once it mounts onto your desktop. You just go ahead and drag drag and drop the Calibrate app into your applications. I decided to do it the long way. But you could have just done it directly within the image. Would have been fine as well. But I've had some experiences in the past where it actually didn't work. So it's very, very odd. Of course, it will warn you saying, are you sure you want to open it? Because this was from a web page we're not familiar with. You say, yes, that's fine, open. And of course, it gives you the same exact look. You just press next because we, we know our language is English, or at least that's our spoken language that you're listening to me right now. And you just go ahead and choose Kobo Mini or Kobo uh, Touch and press next. And that's it. Nice and simple. All right, so here I am on Windows 8, and we're going to go ahead and download the uh, Calibre for Windows 8. Now, one thing that I would suggest is just going to your favorite search engine. I prefer Google, um, and just typing in Calibre. The very first link at the, near the top should be it. So C A, you know, L I B R E, and then go ahead and click the first link, and you're pretty much just same type of steps from here than in Mac or Linux. One thing though to be careful with is how um, whether to use Windows 64 or not. It's good practice to make sure you get the right bit operating system. So in Windows 8 just go to the top right corner make your um, make your commands come up and click on the search and then just type in system just look for the one that's called system under your settings and it should tell you right there so it's a 64-bit operating system and it'll also tell you everything about the system so you have 4 gigs RAM and that I have an Intel Core 2 Duo and yada 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 and so after you after you find out which one you have just go ahead and click on it and download it and it's pretty much the exact same steps as I have already showed you for Mac and for Linux for the exception that it's Windows instead and it's an EXE file and so you go ahead and you can run it. Since it's a small file, I would usually run it, but if you want to save it, go for it. Doesn't matter from here. Same thing works the exact same way for Windows 7, and the exact same thing for XP also. All right, so next program to download now, going back to Google, is the, and you can get this for Mac and for PC if you're the kind of person who just buys books all the time directly from Kobo or you get the, the one million free ones that they have so if there's one you like you can get it from directly using Kobo desktop application um, it works the exact same way for Mac, PC, iPhone and even Android so you go ahead and you know it gives you all your fancy talks about the fancy things you can do with it and how you can customize it and how you like to read your books you just go ahead and you click download now I would prefer that you save it because it is a bigger file. So there you go. So now, just for just for example's sake, now that we know that it's very similar for all three platforms for Windows, Mac, and Linux, all you have to do is just get your Kobo Mini, whether it's on or off, and just go ahead and plug it in. Um, I usually always have it on, so I'm used to seeing it when it's on, but, you know, I would assume that if you plug it in when it's off it'll do the same thing usually it'll also even come up with a notice saying that you know would you like to connect to computer or that it is connected to the computer 
and it's kind of funny because I kind of struggled to plug it in. There you go. Because I was, I did majority of the video taking here with the uh, BlackBerry Playbook camera, so you can imagine the tablet. I'm trying to hold the tablet while also uh, <laughs> recording the video. Nonetheless, there you go. So it'll give you notice the Kobo e-reader comes up on the screen, at least for Linux anyway. Very similar for Mac, and Windows will do the same thing. It'll open up as a folder. And what's really cool at this point is you can literally drag and drop uh, your files into the e-reader. And so here I'm also in this at this video clip that I took of the Kobo Mini. I'm basically showing you its case. So the sleep cover. And what's really cool about the sleep cover, uh, the reason why I'm talking about it, in particular this one, as opposed to a snapback case, uh, the snapback covers is because when you close the the sleep cover it well literally puts the device to sleep and as you can see I'm trying to quickly trick it into uh, <laughs> staying asleep. See there you go and then it realizes oh no I'm not asleep so that helps having this case because if you're if you're kind of a, a night person who reads the e-reader at night for example it puts it to sleep so that you don't waste that much battery you don't always have to flick the switch all the time for the most part, like I said earlier about your instruction manual, if you need any help with your e-reader, you can actually go to um, www.kobo.com slash support. Um, so here they'll basically tell you, you know, as you can see, I seem to be, there we go, slash, so slash help actually, <laughs> my mistake. Um, I'm so used to a lot of products actually like to use the word support. But Kobo, I think, is probably the only product so far I've worked with that does not uh, use the word support. It uses help. So for the most part, you just go ahead and you select your e-reader. So in our case, it's Kobo Mini. And on the next page, it comes up with, you know, top questions, what most people are asking about this device. It also talks about the touch features. It also talks about the, uh, you know, how do you turn it on? How do you use it? troubleshooting so particular issues you may have with it needing to reset the device maybe you want to reset it to factory direct settings hint hint nudge nudge um, you know for people like myself who do data wipes and stuff but and you can even call for support so if you really aren't sure what's going on or you're really not sure what to do you can always contact them what's also pretty cool about Kobo is if you are a Kobo user uh, you can actually download and install uh, an app for it for Android, iPhone, and all that. So I'm just showing you here with my Google Nexus phone. And most tablets do it for Android. Um, whoops. Anyway, so what's cool about the Google phones is that literally, you know, as soon as you click on, play, and when you're on Google Play, and as soon as you click on install and download, it will actually send the signal to your phone to download it so so that's how that looks and how that works so you can actually get a, an app for Kobo so you can actually sync all of your devices with your books that you're reading on what you've bought now right now I'm gonna pretty much this is another video clip of myself showing you how to actually kinda of the basics of how to operate this device usually when you turn it on it usually asks you when you first turn it on about what books have you most recently read? If it's a brand new one that you just bought, uh, you haven't opened it up from the box yet, what it will literally do is it will actually go through a setup step-by-step -step thing. So it'll ask you to make a Kobo account, it'll ask you to uh, set up your Wi-Fi and all that. In this case, since mine's already turned on, by just flicking the switch, by holding it down, you can shut it off. By holding it, by pressing it again, by holding it down, holding it to the right again, can actually turn it on and so of course when you turn it on you gotta wait for it to load so don't be worried if it does some uh, strange things like that it does that sometimes and so once it's finished loading uh, it'll basically uh, if you've already used it already it's not your first time it'll show you your recent books that you had just downloaded or recent books that you have just read so for myself, I've read just my Linux complete study guide, and you can actually go look and go through and sort through all your books here by book. And it shows you what 
format it is and it tells you what type it is and the in some cases even the author so that's the one I'm reading now it seems like very small letters and it is um, but you know not so not so bad for me so if you actually do want to see it you just click on the little magnifying glass with the plus and then you just go ahead and you sc scroll that little you scroll a little bit to the to the right to make the letters bigger and to the left to make it smaller and you can go ahead and adjust it the way you like and you just pretty much you can widen it a little you can make it from side to side if you have preferences for example and so there you go you just touch the screen again to get back to where you are you can touch the screen again to look at your settings you can actually grab that book and put it on a shelf which is kind of like a category they call it a shelf just to be fancy and as you can see I only have really one category but for some reason it's duplicated three times but that one category is called technology because I'm currently studying my Linux Plus here and you can press that button there and you can actually just instead of having to go each page one by one by scrolling or by touching the screen on that page from right to left you can actually now just scroll to multiple pages ahead and go all the way directly to like page 1000 or out of 3000 or whatever or go all the way to one or so on and so forth and as you can see I kinda messed up on my scaling so so certain things that you might have trouble with if you're owning a Kobo Mini is you might actually forget about a certain setting that you have on it for example it will not you'll have trouble changing the page if it's not at 100% for example when it comes to size there we go and then I'll touch the screen and now I should be able to there you go change the page so that's one that's probably a disadvantage for sure there but I mean for someone who's on the go it usually doesn't really matter as much about uh, making sure it has to be a certain size or else I can't turn the page kind of idea and of course you can while you're in your library you can just click on by title and you can actually sort through them or you can press the home button to get back to your home button or to your home menu you can actually click on or touch on sorry touch on discover and you can actually go ahead and take a look through all the books that you want to buy or you would like to buy or what's new the reading life find a particular book maybe a, maybe a particular category particular title particular author maybe you have a favorite you know so on and so forth you touch reading to go down back to what you are currently reading the top right corner of course reveals your settings the time of date and your language your reading settings right your reading life kind of account set up what you like or to set up your Wi-Fi for example let's just say you're in a new Wi-Fi area and you prefer that instead there you go right and then you would just click on or touch on that for if you'd like to connect to a particular uh, Wi-Fi point and I mean Kobo even has its own software that you can download directly from Kobo uh, which helps you with syncing your books as well so that's pretty sweet don't necessarily have to rely only on the e-reader to have the books there when you can do it from your PC and of course you just hold down the button for a good three to five seconds and it shuts it off and there you go now of course for the most part one thing I would probably like to recommend for anybody who's purchasing a Kobo mini just showing you a quick troubleshoot thing here um, this is as you can see here is a nice little design snapback cover so you'll notice in the top left corner if you turn it around to the back is a little notch or what looks like a little like indent uh, sorry I couldn't focus the camera too well because at the same time I'm trying to open it but basically what you do is you pull on that corner and literally it'll snap off if you so I, I wanted to make sure I put enough force without hitting the camera or something so you may have to give me a moment to struggle at it for a bit but basically yeah you would it would snap right off and I'll show you in a moment what kind of troubleshooting you'd want to do and why you would need to take off the snapback uh, just quickly take advantage to let you know on our websites for Magnuson World uh, Magnuson World basically is a nonprofit organization that's all about 
showing people products and how to use them and how they work on all three operating systems. It's something I do for fun uh, myself. And um, we mostly work with Mac, uh, Linux, and Windows. And we also even do small tutorials here and there. You can visit us at magnusonworld.blogspot.ca. You can like us on Facebook. And you can also... All right, so nonetheless, I have provided the links to all of our uh, websites that you can go visit us at, or you can follow us or like us, and uh, the ones that you see here at the bottom of the screen. And just to quickly recap, uh, just to tell you quickly about why you take the snapback off, aside from getting your snapback cases and changing uh, snapback whenever you feel like it to a different color, that little pinhole right there is used to reset the uh, Kobo Mini. So you can use that to reset it in the event of an emergency and stuff like that. So that's one troubleshooting tip for you. It's kind of a kind of a last case scenario kind of idea, but it works.